Hey everyone, Sam here and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to paint a translucent breaking ocean wave. And this is a cool effect that you can incorporate into seascape paintings where you can create that magical glow as the sunlight's passing through the water. Now if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and if you're new around here and it's your first time watching then welcome aboard. There are some written notes that accompany this video if you just check the description box below and I've put the link to the written notes in there. Anyway I hope you enjoyed this video, let's roll the tape. The inspiration for this painting comes from a place called Piha Beach in northern New Zealand. This is a wild area of New Zealand coastline as there's nothing separating it from Australia. Every time I've been to Piha Beach there's always been heavy swells and wild breaking waves. So this is perfect reference for painting seascapes. Now before I started this painting I just gathered up the photo reference I was going to use and I did a few quick thumbnail sketches and then a final sketch to design the composition. And I'd always recommend you do some pencil sketches before you start a painting as you'll have a much better composition and you'll have a better idea of what your painting might look like. I'm working on a 10 inch by 12 inch linen panel. I'm using a number one round brush and I begin sketching out my composition by mixing in burnt sienna with some liquid original. The liquid original speeds up the drying time and improves the flow of the paint. Now as I sketch out my composition I'll just quickly go over the idea behind the design of this painting and I'll explain the colours I'm going to be using as well. The main focal area of this painting is the translucent breaking wave in the foreground. I've then loosely incorporated an S composition where the channel between the rocks in the foreground subtly leads the eye towards the breaking wave. The cliffs and the rocks in the background help anchor the composition and subtly lead the eye back towards the breaking wave. The colours I'm using in this painting include titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, quinacridone crimson, ultramarine blue and phthalo green. When I first start painting an artwork the first thing I think about are the values and values are how light or dark a subject is. I think getting the values right is more important than the colour. So when I start a painting I want to establish all my dark values and shadows first and then that makes it much easier for me to gauge the rest of the lighter values and the colour saturation when I start painting the areas that are in light. I begin by painting the lightest of my shadows first which are in the clouds and this is a combination of ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna that just desaturates it, titanium white and then just a very small amount of quinacridone crimson. I move on to the cliffs which are a much darker value and I'm using the same colours that I was using in the cloud shadows but with much less titanium white. And then for the rock shadows in the foreground I'm just using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Now that I've got all my dark values established I can already see a tonal dynamic and it's going to make it much easier for me to paint the areas in light. So I'll quickly move on to the cloud highlights which is a combination of titanium white with a little burnt sienna and then I paint the sky which is titanium white mixed with ultramarine blue. Now as this is a short video I'm just going to focus on painting the breaking waves and creating the translucency within the water which is actually not as difficult as you'd think. Painting translucent waves is always eye catching in a seascape and it starts in the blocking in stage. 
As the breaking wave barrels over, the wall of water in the upper section of the wave is much thinner, allowing light to pass through it. I paint the translucent water with a mixture of titanium white, with some ultramarine blue and phthalo green, and I'll only need a small amount of these colours. I made the midsection of the wave a little darker by adding some more ultramarine blue, yellow oxide and phthalo green, and I used the same colours for the lower section of the breaking wave, but with much less titanium white, so this makes the value darker. As I paint the breaking wave, I also subtly blend in those colours. I use my same shadow mix that I used in the lower section of the breaking wave to paint the horizon and the sea in the distance. I begin to paint the highlights and the white water and foam on the waves. And this is a mixture of titanium white with some burnt sienna. I use a number 4 flat brush and I start painting the crests of the waves and marking in the foam and the white water in the foreground. In this seascape the waves are backlit so the sun is shining behind them. And as that wave barrels over it forms a blanket of foam that's mostly in shadow. So for this I mix a combination of ultramarine blue with some titanium white a little burnt sienna and a small amount of quinacridone crimson. I then begin working on the foam and white water in the foreground. I use my sea mix and my foam shadow mix to paint the rest of the foreshore. I finish up the blocking in stage by painting in the sunlit areas of the rocks and the cliff faces and blocking in the foliage on top of the cliff. When I return to the painting, I begin by working on the zone that's furthest away, which is the sky and the clouds. I start adding finer detail to the clouds and refining their shapes. I'm also adding lighter layers to the highlights of the clouds. The clouds and the sky are some of the lightest values in this painting, and this helps it to sit back within the landscape. Once I've spent time working on the sky, I then move on to the cliffs again and start modelling the paint and building up the detail within the cliff faces. I'm also adding lighter layers, which is the reflected light coming from the sea. Next, I move on to the focal area of the painting, the barrelling translucent breaking wave. I'm going to add some more colour to this and spend some time modelling the paint so I can create the illusion of turbulent water as the wave is barreling over. I'm using a smaller number 2 flat brush and I just restate those areas that I painted in the blocking in stage. I also add some darker tone to the lower section of the wave and I blend in those colours to give the illusion of turbulent water. Again, I'm still using the same colours that I used in the blocking in stage. I'm applying my brush marks in the general direction that the wave is barreling over. Now as this is only a short video, I'm just going to spend the rest of the video giving you some tips on painting breaking waves. The waves in this seascape are backlit as the sun is shining behind them, and for the sunlit areas of the wave crests and the white water, I haven't been using pure white paint from the tube. In fact, I've been mixing in a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and also a little quinacridone crimson just to make the value of that white darker so that I can add lighter layers during the painting. This will help to create more depth in the water and communicate a three-dimensional form. So with each pass, I've been progressively adding lighter layers of paint, as you can see here. I begin painting the foam patterns on the breaking wave, and foam patterns can really give a sense of drama and interest to a seascape, and they're always fun to paint. I'm using the same shadow mixture that's in the rest of the white water and the breaking wave, 
and this is a mixture of ultramarine blue with a little chronacridone crimson, burnt sienna and titanium white. I'm applying the paint with a number zero round brush. When you're painting the foam patterns on the breaking wave, it's important to paint them in the direction that the wave is breaking. This will help to communicate that the wave is barreling over as it breaks. When painting seascapes, I always save my lightest values till the end of the painting, and I'm now at the point where I'm ready to add the final layers of paint. Before I add individual highlights to the crests of the waves and the white water and foam, I'm going to paint a little bit of sea mist above some of those waves and around some areas of the foam bursts and white water. I'm now also using my lightest values. So I mix titanium white, but I warm up that colour a little bit by mixing in some cadmium yellow. I then dry brush the paint above the crests of the waves. I use the same paint mixture to paint some highlights on the foam and breaking waves in the foreground and some of those spills and foam bursts. I use a bristle dagger brush to paint some spray in the white water in the foreground. The bristles help to create droplets of water that are sparkling in the sun. I continue to use a quarter inch dagger brush to paint some more reflected light in the shadow areas of the breaking waves and white water. I finish up the seascape by adding in a few seagulls, which just adds a bit of life and interest to the painting. It also adds some drama to the seascape. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did be sure to give it a like and also feel free to leave me a comment in the comments section below, especially if you have any questions on painting waves or seascapes or any other art related questions. And also I welcome suggestions for future videos and some of you have given me some great suggestions so far and those paintings and videos are in the making at the moment so keep those coming. If you'd like to learn more about painting ocean waves and seascapes in general, then check out the full length painting tutorial video I have available from my website, which features the painting in this video. Anyway, keep those comments and video suggestions coming in. I'm gonna crack on with the next video. Happy painting and I shall see you next time. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about painting, then check out the painting resources on my website at samuelerp.com. My painting blog has lots of free written painting tutorials and reference photos that you can paint along with. I have a selection of in-depth painting videos where I show you how to paint an artwork from start to finish, including how to mix the colours which I demonstrate on my palette, and Art Theory Made Easy, which I explain in the context of each video, so you can learn as you paint. And I also have a painting tutorial video subscription service on my Patreon profile at patreon.com forward slash Samuel underscore Earp underscore artist. All the website links can be found in the description below. Thanks for watching and happy painting.